Today is gonna be a bit of a challenge. I am attempting to prep five family meals. That is basically a week's worth of dinners for my family in under an hour. I pressed the easy button and had a grocery order delivered from Walmart. So most of this is from Walmart that I'll be using to make these meals, except for these items here, which came from Thrive Market, who's sponsoring today's video, but put a pin in that, we will come back to it. I almost forgot the gnocchi. <laughs> I forgot to put the gnocchi out, but I'm using a pound or a 17 ounce package, so a little more than a pound of potato gnocchi. You know if you watch my channel that I am all about staying on a budget when we can and getting good deals on groceries and putting together inexpensive meals, but sometimes I have to think about budgeting my time. Time is just as valuable as money in some cases, and it's a commodity that we have to reserve, and the name of the game with this particular meal plan is saving time across the week because I'm gonna prep everything all at once, and then we'll have our meals ready to just heat and eat on the days when we plan to eat them. So there are some convenience items in this grocery haul for this meal plan, like cheese that's already been shredded, and pre-made dips, and chicken that is already Already been cooked. Veggies that are already chopped and some salad kits for easy vegetable sides. For the proteins, I've got three pounds of chicken thighs that I'm gonna use in two different recipes. And I decided that I wanted to do like a sheet pan steak meal. So I've got about one and a half pounds of skirt steak and I'm really looking forward to that recipe. I also got a big bag of rolls that I'm gonna use for a few different meals, I hope. And I have some rice and some pasta, plus some basic condiments and seasonings and a few other things that I can throw on the side with these meals. So let's get started. Okay, I'm starting my timer now. Now I do have some water coming to a boil behind me on the stove so I can get my pasta cooking for a recipe I'm gonna be throwing together later. But first up, I'm going to prep this easy peanut chicken satay. And I cannot remember right now off the top of my head the website where I found this, but I will put it right here on the screen and I will also link this recipe in the description box below. <laughs> so into my blender thingy madoodle here, whatever this is, the pitcher, I guess you'd call it. I am putting one can of coconut milk. This is a 13 and a half ounce or 14 ounce can. I'm putting half a cup of creamy peanut butter. And I'll be honest, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. It calls for three tablespoons of honey. I'm gonna actually probably go kind of easy on that and maybe just do two because the peanut butter I was using also had honey in it. Three tablespoons of lime juice. I'm just gonna squeeze what I have. And actually, I only have one lime, so I'm gonna use one lime and one lemon and hope that that won't throw it off too much here. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. One teaspoon of cumin two teaspoons of curry powder. It calls for fresh ginger, but I don't have any fresh ginger to grate, so I'm just gonna use just some um, powdered ginger that I have in the pantry. Probably just gonna use a, about a teaspoon or so, maybe a little less since the powdered stuff should be a little more potent than the fresh stuff. A dash of red pepper flake, and then a teaspoon of garam masala. And I was really happy to be able to find this on Thrive Market because I haven't seen it in my stores. Oh, I almost forgot. A tablespoon of oil. It recommends sesame oil, but I'm sure you could use, you know, just olive oil or another kind of oil. I am just gonna pop this into my blender and then I'm going to pour it over my chicken thighs. I almost forgot the garlic. <laughs> so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit in here over the top, it'll be fine. Now I purchased a three pound package of chicken thighs and I used about two thirds of that package or about two pounds of chicken thighs in this recipe right here. And when I'm ready to make that this week, oops, someone's at the door. <laughs> neighbor kids <laughs> coming to ask my kids to come outside and play. Anyway, what was I saying? Yes, chicken, okay, chicken. I'm gonna pop this into the fridge because I'm gonna make it in the next few days and when I'm ready to make it, I'm just gonna throw it into my slow cooker and I'm gonna cook it in the crock pot on high for six to seven hours or low for, for three to four or until the chicken's done. I'm gonna shred it up and we're gonna eat it over rice with some kind of super easy vegetable side like steam in the bag veggies or a can of green beans or maybe uh, the fresh veggies or the salad that I bought. It'll, it'll be really easy and I'm sure it's gonna be really tasty. This next one is so easy. I'm almost hesitant to even call it a recipe. <laughs> All I am doing is taking this skirt steak and throwing it into a container or a Ziploc bag with these green beans and this package of potato gnocchi. 
And I'm gonna use this Kevin's Cilantro Lime Sauce. It's a favorite of mine. I rarely get store-bought marinades, but I really like this one. You could just use some oil and seasonings, whatever you want. Now, the reason that I am using potato gnocchi instead of fresh potatoes is because, first of all, it's kind of hard to do meal preps with raw potatoes. You almost have to use those at the time of the meal. But also, I intend to turn this into a sheet pan meal. So when it's time to cook it, I'm going to just lay the steak out on a sheet pan and then surround it with the green beans and the potato gnocchi and I'm gonna cook it in the oven until the steak is the desired doneness for us which is medium so it'll probably be about five to seven minutes on each side potatoes take much longer than that to roast at least for me where I am in my oven and potato gnocchi cooks much faster so I made sure that I chose things to go along with this steak sheet pan meal that would cook in about the same amount of time or roast on the sheet pan in about the same amount of time as the steak I do realize that I am breaking one of my own rules by using a ready-made marinade. I actually just made a video a few weeks back where I talked about things that I make from scratch or make just myself at home in order to save a little money. And marinades was one of the things that I mentioned. However, on a week like this week, when I'm trying to budget my time and I'm looking for a few shortcuts, they really can come in handy. And this Kevin's cilantro lime sauce is delicious. I've used it several times and I keep repurchasing it from Thrive Market, who is sponsoring today's video. I get asked all the time, about gluten-free recipes or dairy-free recipes or a keto or low-carb friendly meal plan. And honestly, you know better than I do what your family needs for your eating preferences and how to make substitutions and cater to that. But one thing I can recommend, especially if you have special dietary needs, is to check out Thrive Market. They're an online grocery retailer on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everybody. And they do this by offering thousands of natural and organic products on their website that you can peruse through and shop for on your phone or on your computer and then have them delivered right to your doorstep. I have been purchasing fewer snacks lately for my family and what I am purchasing I'm getting pretty particular about. So besides stocking up on fruits and vegetables, I want healthy options that won't ruin healthy dinners and also some options that are great for on the go. They were having a sale on this Lesser Evil popcorn when I placed my order the other day that made it an absolute steal. So I stocked up because we like it. And that is something that I love about Thrive Market because in addition to having thousands of natural and organic products that are already priced below traditional retail. They also offer lots of deals and sales and discounts, especially if you're keeping an eye on the website. My husband tried these, that's it, fruit bars at a church function a couple weeks back and asked me if I would hunt some down for him. So I was really happy to see that they carried the mini ones at Thrive Market. Thrive Market is also a great resource if you are following a specific diet or have specific dietary preferences like keto or paleo or vegan or vegetarian or Whole30. In fact, you can sort their products on their website or in the app according to your preference. I do not follow a plant-based lifestyle, but there are some things that I really like, like this Calafia Farms Barista Blend Oat Milk. This makes the most fantastic lattes, and I can only find this particular kind at Thrive Market. Thrive Market has a savings guarantee, so if you don't save at least as much money as your membership costs in your first year, then they will make up the difference. And the best bang for your buck where a membership is concerned is to get the annual membership because it comes out to just about $5 a month. And this can be a really fantastic resource if you are living in an area where there aren't a lot of grocery stores that carry products that you need for specific dietary preferences. Plus, when you sign up for a membership today, they're offering a deal is 30% off your entire first order, plus a free gift worth up to $60. When you go to thrivemarket.com slash cmindymom or you follow the link in the description box below. Again, that's 30% off your entire first order when you join today. You can really take advantage of that first order and get some great deals. The Lesser Evil Himalayan Gold Movie Theater Taste with a Better For You Better Alternative Popcorn. Can highly recommend, 10 out of 10. So again, for 30% off your entire first order plus a free gift, visit the link in the description box below or go to thrivemarket.com slash cmindymom. And thank you again to Thrive Market for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to it. For this casserole, I'm going just a little bit extra. I'm gonna make a bechamel and throw a little cheese in it along with the marinara. So it'll be almost kind of like an Alfredo marinara casserole. So in my skillet here, I have two tablespoons of butter that I melted and I'm just whisking in two tablespoons of flour. Now I'm going to gradually whisk in one cup of milk. 
and I'm going to keep stirring this over medium heat. I just want to stir it all together until it starts to thicken up. I am going to add a handful of this Italian style blend, probably about a cup or so to my bechamel. And I'm gonna stir that in while I also add one jar of marinara. This is just like plain old jar marinara. You can use whatever kind you like. A little bit of water so I can clean out all that yummy sauce from the jar. Now I'm adding one five ounce package of pepperonis. I like to chop mine up just a little bit when I'm putting them into casseroles like this and my pasta and this is just one pound of pasta that i cooked while i was preparing some of the other recipes i'm going to stir this all together i'm going to pour it into a 9 by 13 casserole dish and then top it with some more of my italian cheese blend i'm going to put a lid on it and i'm going to pop it in the fridge i could also put it into a freezer casserole dish you know what i mean the like tin foil ones i can't remember <laughs> can't remember what they're called. I could put it into one of those and freeze it and have it later on, but since we're gonna be eating this within the next few days, I'm just gonna store it in a nine by 13 in the fridge, and then all I will have to do is put that into the oven at 350 until it's heated through about 30 to 40 minutes, and we'll have another delicious dinner, really easy and ready to go, and it will make fantastic leftovers too for lunches. This next recipe is coming by way of my friend Carrie over at Lazy Day Cooking Club. I'll leave some more information about that in the description box below, but basically it is a crock pot cooking club Club where Carrie and her sister Christina put recipes that are not just for the crock pot but are for freezer prep so they tell you what to prep and freeze and then how to finish up the recipe on cooking day so more information about that in the description box but this is going to be a copycat version of the Panera chicken and wild rice soup so I'm so excited to try it in my container here I have my other three chicken thighs from my big package and I am adding to that two stalks of celery two medium carrots and half an onion. I'm also going to add a few cloves or a couple tables, a couple teaspoons of minced garlic, a teaspoon of oregano, a couple of bay leaves, salt, pepper, and I'm also adding this box of long grain and wild rice. I want to add the rice and the seasoning packet. And now I'm just gonna pop the lid on it and put it in the fridge until I'm ready to cook it later this week. To find out how we're finishing up this recipe, let's, <laughs> let's, I can't, let's, let's, okay, I can do this. I'm running out of time. To find out how I'm finishing up this recipe, let's fast forward, why can I not say this? To find out how we're finishing this up, let's fast forward to the night when we're actually making this and I'll show you how we're finishing it up. It is cooking day for the chicken and wild rice soup and I have the contents of my meal prep here in the crock pot and I'm just going to add four cups of chicken broth which I actually made from bouillon. So I actually already put the bouillon in there and I just am adding four cups of water. I pop the lid on and I have my crock pot set on high. The recipe specifically suggests that you cook it on high. It says you should not cook this one on low. So in three to four hours our chicken will be done and we'll be ready to come back and finish this up. I let my soup cook for about three and a half hours on high and then my chicken was done. So I took the chicken out and shredded that up. And here in this jar I have two cups of milk and I'm going to add to that half a cup of flour. I'm going to shake that up really, really well. I'm going to put the lid on the jar and shake it up really well and then pour that into the soup along with the shredded chicken. And then it should just take about 20 to 30 minutes to heat back up and to thicken up with the milk and flour mixture in there. Now I'm sure you could use cornstarch as a thickener instead of flour. If I was doing that, I would probably make a slurry with the milk and cornstarch instead of the flour, but I would probably only use half as much cornstarch. I think I'd probably just use a quarter cup of cornstarch and see how it does. If I need to thicken it up with more, I can. I just feel like half a cup might be too much, but you could try that if you didn't want to use flour. But this is heating back up in the crock pot. It will thicken as it heats through, and then we'll be ready to eat it. And I just have a veggie tray to put out for everybody to kind of snack on, and I've got plenty of rolls left that I can turn into garlic toast. So really looking forward to this because it's one of my favorite soups one of my favorite things in general on the Panera menu. The last meal that I am prepping is actually going to be dinner tonight. And it is a little two ingredient recipe hack that I've shared multiple times. All I do is I take fully cooked chicken and sometimes I have purchased a rotisserie chicken and just pulled the chicken off of the bone. This time I actually took the shortcut of having the chicken already off the bone. And I mix that with a prepared dip, like a spinach artichoke dip or a tzatziki dip. I actually like the bacon ranch cheddar dip. That's one of my family's 
favorite. So we're gonna mix that together. And then you can use that so many different ways. You can put it on pasta, you can put it on potatoes, but we really like to have this on sandwiches, which is one of the reasons I purchased the rolls. And then the leftover rolls we can use to make garlic toast um, throughout the rest of the week with the rest of the dinners. This also makes a pretty easy lunch prep because you can mix the chicken and the dip together and then store it in a container in the refrigerator and then put it into tortillas or wraps or onto sandwiches or even make salads with it throughout the week. I am a little bit shocked at this. I wasn't sure I could do it, but when I went to stop my timer after I was done preparing all five meals, it was just over an hour. It was like an hour and three minutes. And that was with moving the camera around, stopping to give some tutorials. I even did a little cleanup as I went. I did keep a trash bowl next to me, which I do a lot of times when I'm cooking so I can just throw all of my trash away at once whenever I'm done with the process, which saves me from going back and forth to the trash can. And even after all of the cooking and the prep work, it took me less than 15 minutes to tidy up the kitchen. So five dinners prepped for my family, basically our entire week's worth of meals in right around an hour. That's a win in my book. For more meal prep and cooking inspiration, watch one of these videos next and be sure to check out Thrive Market. They're linked in the description box below for 30% off your first order.